Welcome, my friends, to the showdown between the Vampire Counts, who shall be led by Manfred von Baldstein. And today, my friends, we face off against the Empire, who shall be led by Captain Mustache, aka Volkmar the Grim, and Hadris. Now, as far as my build goes, going a little bit wide. Now, normal Vampire Count play does focus very heavily on gooning, so using terror geists and flying characters to just snipe enemy lords and characters, but I like to play a little bit different, for better or for worse. Let's go ahead and take a look. So in the front line, a couple of grave guard, we have a bunch of skeleton spears and some regular skeletons. So just going very wide, in case the Empire does have some sort of a gun line or any sort of a pressure like that. I want to have some skeletons with shields that can just kind of screen out like outriders and pistol ears and other harass elements. Against Vampire Counts, from what I've seen, a couple ways that they are often uh, fought by the Empire is either using a somewhat elite Empire build that's kind of grindy with Volkmar the Grim, or sometimes you see full kite. So outriders, pistol ears, demogriff knights, like a MOBA build like that with Karl Franz. Anyways, here, guys, two White Kings. I do also have Blood Knights and the Dire Pack here in the back. So Blood Knights are pretty good. So definitely one of the better Cav units in the game. They can uh, fight the Empire Cav pretty efficiently. They have anti-large and are just a, just a beast of a unit. We do also have the Dire Pack, some Cryptors as well. I wasn't sure what to expect from him, so I brought some Cryptors just to kind of pound on Greatswords in case he went that elite. But again, we'll see how these guys do. Now, this is kind of a wild card pick here. Um, probably if I were to really optimize the build in terms of competitive play, I might cut the Cairn race and get something with like heavy AP against Volkmar because it's really tricky. Uh, Volkmar the Grim is tough to kill, but I mean, if we can wipe the rest of the army and surround him with Blood Knights, hopefully that'll be enough to bring that bad boy down. Dire Wolves, and uh, as far as Manfred goes, he's going to be on a Hell Siege, just spamming magic. So he has Spirit Leech, Invocation, and Raise Dead. Now for the Force of Hadris. Very, uh, very much a porcupine build. He does have Sigmar Sons. He's got a bunch of spears and flagellants in the back. He does have great swords. Uh, looks like some spearmen. The Black Lion's certainly going to be quite a liability to protect against all my pressure pieces, but if they're able to sit and shoot, can certainly do some huge damage. It's basically just a Hellstorm rocket battery on wheels. A Warrior Priest over here, a Firecaster with Flaming Sword, Burning Head to clear out my chaff, and Demogriff Knights in the back, aka the Royal Altar of Griffites. Certainly going to be a ferocious fight. The Hellstorm rocket battery is teeing off. Not Hellstorm rocket battery, but the uh, Black Lion's. And it looks like he's going to be trying to catch me in a banishment here. So I do see it at the last second and am able to dodge it for the most part. I think I'll actually end up losing like one Grave Guard, if any. No, it looks like I didn't lose any. So that ended up being a pretty good situation. Getting one of Volkmar's very precious uh, free banishment spells he does have. So now we're advancing. Black Lions are shooting at the uh, Sternsman here. Sternsman taking a bit of a pounding down to 67 models from 90. So you can see the damage is quite substantial. On that note, you know, kind of in response to that pressure, I will be getting my Felbats, and the Felbats are going to be flying over and landing on top of the Black Alliance. So I just wanted to shut down the firing. I know I'd probably lose the Felbats here, but I kind of wanted to keep my Graveguard alive so they could at least get in and fight the Flagellants. Granted, the Black Lions aren't really going to take any substantial damage, and I do try and pull my Felbats back here, just trying to get away. So maybe even if I have a couple left at the end of the game, or in the mid game, I can use them to tie something down. So now the frontline fighting is about to be underway. The White Kings are going to be surging in. Volkmar the Grim, his mustache bristling with anticipation, prepares. On the flank, a little bit of a misplay on my part. I let Manfred get shot by his one missile piece, which are the Sterling's Revenge. And that didn't need to happen. It's a lot of free damage he's getting on Manfred, which could cost me later in the game. So definitely need to be a little bit more cautious. Now here I did see a Warrior Priest and Demogriff Knights coming towards my ghostly unit. So I pull back immediately because of the big buffs that he can drop with the Soulfire Bombardment and Flaming Sword of Ruin. He could really wreck my Hex Race in combat. So now we have Sigmar Sons versus the Sternsmen. Sternsmen should be able to win this despite the fact they're super beat up. I do also have a White King here, pretty good against infantry. You can see the Sternsmen are taking some pretty heavy casualties. But now the Black Lions are shooting at Manfred, and he's going to be dropping some zombies on top of the Sternsmen while we saturate in with some skeletons and some skeleton spears to try and occupy Volkmar. Basically just trying to muck him up over here, cause a distraction while the Blood Knights do a frontal charge on the Flagellants, just really trying to get on those Black Lions because those guys are doing some serious, serious damage. So here comes the Hex Race, charging into some Spears. The Spears are in combat with the Bats, so they're not technically braced. The Shield of Faith is activated, going to give them 22% ward save, so they will take less damage. Granted, this was more of a distraction. Wanted to pull them away, so Manfred could go in and attack the Black Lions. In the meantime, some Doggos are weaving through the seam here, and I see a pretty good opportunity to Guna's Caster. So the Dogs are going to attack the Caster, and the Bright Wizard only has, like, what, like 30 melee defense or something? So Manfred plus that, plus a Spear Leech. I should be able to Goon out his Caster very quickly. And you can see the Bright Wizard is going to be getting uh, put in the can, hopefully for good. So the dog's still pressuring. A really nice burning head from Hadris does go down and clear out some Graveguard. And, uh, I mean, it won't do much against the Cryptors, but he does get the Graveguard down, which is a really nice catch. Frontline is going well. The Starsmen were able to really bully down the Sigmar Suns. You know, Sigmar Suns don't really have enough AP to burn through that, but we do get rid of his caster very early in the game. So the Bright Wizard is out of the picture, but a nice soul fire there. 
is able to retaliate and drag down a couple doggos. On top of that, after getting the Bright Wizard, we're really going to be pushing in, trying to take out the Black Lions, because if they can stabilize at any point, it could cause some huge problems. So the Blood Knight's still hammering in the front, helping the Skeleton Spears in a moment. We'll be pulling back up and around, but this is actually a really bad situation here. Manfred gets caught, and you can see the Royal Outdoor of Good Fights are coming in, and I'm kind of trapped between a wagon and a hard place. So far from apartment on the other side, really good play from Hadris. Able to pop my Skeleton Spearman once again, but Manfred is trapped. I don't really have any help nearby. I have the Hex Race, uh, of course, uh, who can pop in and help, and some dogs, but for the most part, we're going to overcast an Invocation to try and keep Manfred alive, and from there, going to be dropping some zombies. Though Now, the silver lining of this engagement is the Blood Knights can come in and get a free charge onto the back of these very expensive Griffites. You can see here the Blood Knights with a thundering couched lance charge right into the back of those uh, Royal Outdoor of Griffites. It's going to be some huge damage, so a very scrappy fight. We also summon some zombies, and Manfred's trying his best to get away. In the meantime, though, we are getting some free real estate in the back. The Black Lines have lost two of their three models, and the third one should go down here in a quick moment. So Manfred is pretty much the X Factor that isn't going terribly well. I still have my White Kings, and the Bounce of Power is just dead even. But the Denver Griff Knights, the Royal Outdoor Griff Knights have no healing since he brought a Fire Wizard, which is now gone. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be able to Spirit Leech them. I have a White King on them. I have the Blood Knights, which are pretty much full health. And Manfred is able to get away here. So Manfred's going to pull up in the sky, but he's negative leadership. He's crumbling down. Negative 16, very, very low. Negative 43 suddenly. So I'm going to be attacking the uh, Spearman, trying to get a winning. So, so essentially, it's like a leadership buff if you're winning in combat. So I charge in. We'll also be dropping a summon to trigger that. Scab Scrape going down at the same time here. But I make a pretty fatal mistake. I stay in combat for far too long. I figured summoning the zombies, I would be okay. But yeah, the leadership here is still tanking. So Manfred's going to be trying to pull back and through, but he probably will not make it to see another day. So the Blood Knight's able to 100% KO the Royal Altar of Griffites. And all he really has left, honestly, are the great swords. He has some uh, missile pieces over here, the Sterling's Revenge, but we are going to get the Sternsman over, and the Sternsman should be able to cut them to pieces with a rear charge coming in as well from the uh, Skeleton Spearman and these other troops. So that's a great little engagement for us, but, you know, Volkmar's still here, and his mustache is still visible to my forces, causing a massive morale debuff. And uh, he still has a lot of AoE. So, you know, even if I charge in, for example, the Blood Knights and the White Kings and characters like that, he is going to have the Soul Fire Bombardment. So I, I end up leaving the White Kings in combat, but there are Grave Guard here, and you know, honestly, Volkmar just beats the hell out of these guys. And I don't know how Volkmar does so much damn damage, considering he, like, doesn't have AP values. But Volkmar and the Warrior Priest just absolutely got that White King right there, taking him apart. In the meantime, my Cav are trying to clean up the Spears. I really don't want Volkmar to get some reinforcements on top of him that he can really start to cause problems. So I'm using the Blood Knights. I'm using the other troops to just clean up every piece of uh, chaff or <laughs> trash that you uh, possibly can. But I do see my White King taking a little bit of damage. Definitely don't want that. So the Blood Knights are going to come in and uh, just try and lance down some of these great swords. We get a pretty brutal charge, but a Sulfur Bombardment will be coming right after, so we have to pull back immediately, lest we lose quite a few models. And you can see we actually lose one model and a bit of HP. Skeletons are piling in, but the Great Swords definitely took a ton of damage from that engagement. So Bounce Fire is dead even for the most part, maybe a little bit Empire Vapored. But basically, at this point, my path to victory is pushing off the Great Swords and then pushing off the Warrior Priest. Volkmar, of course, is unbreakable on top of his War Altar, so I'm going to have to beat him down the old-fashioned way. And he's full health. It's uh, quite scary, to be uh, quite frank here. And he's pretty good at crowd clearing with these soul fire bombardments and those other mechanics. So right here we do break off the spears. The spears are broken. Should really not be a factor for the rest of the game. And you can see the warrior priest is taking a bit of damage. Really nice soul fire there. Able to hit my uh, Cairn race. But I do pull them back and avoid some of that damage. But nonetheless, it's really, really nasty for sure. That kind of a uh, heavy firepower. And it really, you know, I was feeling the lack of the terror guys. Because a single terror guys would be able to just clean this up right now. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. But can the blood knights, the knights of red keep, get in there and take these bad boys out? I think so. They're pretty good uh, anti-large. Their stats are quite chevroned up. You can see they're 43-43 right now from all the chevrons. And uh, the Warrior Priest is not immune to psychology, which you would think a Sigmarite, uh, Sigmarite Warrior Priest would be, but I guess they're still only human, right? But the Hex Race do cause terror, so I do have some terror out in my game. The Great Swords are broken off, and now we're just going to be cycle charging like pretty aggressively while we have the Skeletons and the other Chaff units. Do a little bit of fast-forwarding here just to uh, spare you guys the uh, grindy nature of this battle. But here you can see the Warrior Priest. I sit in combat for quite some time, and the Warrior Priest is actually taking a bit of damage. He's terrified right there, uh, but nonetheless, he still could come back. He's only wavering. It's just a terror route. We actually have to get a natural break to get him off the battlefield. Negative three, and he is broken. This is good for us. This is our path back to victory. So the Warrior Priest is broken, but I do also lose my White King at the same time. But, you know, now it's just Volkmar versus the Blood Knights and some Skeleton Spears, and the Warrior Priest is going to be getting chased off. There's no way he's coming back. He will be 100% KO'd there by those Hex Rays. So really now it's just a grind against Volkmar. Volkmar is at half health, and I do have a lot of anti-large characters here. 
Now, there's something I really want you guys to focus on as we get into the late game of this campaign. The Black Lion's wagons are here. Now, they do serve as terrain features. So, for example, if Volkmar is to park in between these, uh, these, these wagons, my Blood Knights get caught. You can see the Blood Knights really struggle to get through it, and they get kind of path, and they have some issues here. And I'm just kind of juking back and forth trying to get a good charge. But look at this. A lot of the Blood Knights don't actually get in. They get stuck on the freaking wagons. The Black Lions are the MVP right here in the fourth quarter, as my Blood Knights, only like three or four of them are able to get on simply because of these stupid wagons. I just cannot get on them, which... I feel like, you know, it was funny we were talking about it, but I feel like, like, wouldn't it be funny if Treekin did the same thing? They just turned into a tree and you can't get past them. Anyways, I come in with Volkmar and you can see a lot of the Blood Knights, instead of getting a surround, get blocked by the damn wagons. And honestly, I think it's costing me the game right now. Even though it's in his favor, if all the Blood Knights got a heavy surrounding charge on Volkmar, that would be a ton of damage. He would probably be at like 1500 to 1800 HP now. I could cycle charge, I could rinse and repeat. But in this case, he is protected so heavily by the wagons. And of course, he's sitting there. He doesn't have to come to me. Look at this. This is the ultimate choke. Only like one or two Blood Knights can get through. He is surrounded so well. The Black Lion MVP wagon play is out of control. So now as we fast forward here, guys, you can see it continues to happen. Uh, and I just can't do anything. He just sits in between the wagons there. And I get a good charge right there, but that's too little too late my army crumbles to ash. Now, without those wagons, I do think I would have had a chance. Not a guarantee of victory. Depends on the melee attack and, you know, the RNG of that thing. But, uh, man, that really, really was good. So, aside from that, that was an issue. But the main issue in this game was my play with Manfred. I was very sloppy. Uh, Manfred could have just hidden the entire game and been safe. And that he didn't need to take that damage. I was far too aggressive with him early. I let him get caught by Blood Knights. It was my sloppy play that really was the uh, big downfall there. But nonetheless, it ended up being a really close game. It was super fun. So well played to Hadris. Hopefully you guys enjoyed his MVP Black Lions rocking 34 kills. And guys, we will be back with more content soon. You guys have an excellent night and take care.